Hey, Professor Dave here. In this video, we're gonna build a five-pointed sub-D star, and I wanna thank two of my students, Jingu and Kara, for the idea. Uh, right here in the overview, you're gonna see the final result there. We're gonna get to that in just a few minutes, but also I wanted to share with you some of the commands we're gonna use. There's not a lot of commands, and this really gets into my strategy. So these small set of commands you're looking at right up, uh, up at the top there, is really kind of a indicative of my process, which is always creating things as simple as possible. And that's for a very good reason. As a project evolves and gets larger and more complicated, that's where problems can crop up. So if you ever had issues with things uh, not closing or fillets that just explode, um, this will help that tremendously, if not cure it completely. All right, so there's the end result. Let's dive in here. I'm gonna zoom in. You'll notice that one of the arms here that I'm pointing at is a lighter color. So this is currently editable and anything we do to that one little segment will be mirrored or radiated to the rest. You'll see I have red lines and I drew those just so that I would have the axes visible. I like to keep things always on the origin if possible. It just helps my accuracy. So step one, let's build some construction lines. This is another strategy that I employ so that things can be more accurate. You can always build stuff kind of by eyeball method, just going, yeah, looks close, looks good. But we're gonna have to have five things perfectly matched. So let's do some construction lines. I'm gonna start off by just making a single straight line or polyline curve. You'll notice I have my O snaps on, so I can snap to the end point. And I'm gonna come out here. Doesn't matter how far. So we got one line. Anytime you can use commands to skip using math, that's what you should do. So you'll see right now, if I go into transform, array, polar, we're gonna pick this one blue curve, enter, and now I'm gonna use my O snap to make sure we keep this accurate. So that's why I got the red lines there. I'm gonna snap from the end of that blue line, which is also the origin. Number of items, also don't forget to check the command line. I'm gonna type in five. And then the angle to fill, we want it to go all the way around 360. So I'll just enter that. We do still have a preview and I'm just gonna click to finish. So there you go. Those are the construction lines for the different segments. We can now turn off the axes. So this little area here is where I'm gonna build all of my work before we do the command to get it to go all the way around, which is coming up, so hang on. I'd like to make this as accurate as possible. So it's gonna be hard to go to the, uh, the same point on both of these. So again, I'm not gonna do any math. I'm just gonna use a construction curve here with the circle. There you go. So that is the same point on all of these five arms going out. Let's jump over to the surface layer and we're ready. We're gonna start making a very simple sub D surface. In fact, many people aren't even aware of this because um, the tendency for beginners is just to build, hey, here's a sphere or here's a box um, or some other method. So as you get better, you'll start building things from fundamental pieces because you get more control and it's, it can be more fun. So the very first command on the sub D toolbar is create a single face. Now, again, I've got the O snaps on, so I'm gonna go from the center. That's an intersection, second intersection, and close it off. That looks kind of weird. Let's hit the tab toggle that gives you the box mode view of a single plane. Not, not particularly interesting, but we're getting close to what we need here. We're not having to build a lot. So I'm gonna uh, now control shift, pick this edge and notice the gumball is oriented by default to the, the world axes, the X, Y, and Z. I'd like to extrude this perpendicular to that edge so that it comes perfectly out. Easy to do, you just go into the gumball setting and say align to the object. Notice it flips to match those edges and I can now grab this green axis. So the arrow is moving, the dot is to extrude. So I wanna bring that guy out. Now you also notice there's lots of handles here. There is the little tiny waffles for moving. There's the arcs for rotating but sometimes uh, you miss these 
scale boxes. So I'm going to scale that down just by dragging that edge. And notice it's going along the linear edge perfectly. All right. Just for fun, let's go back, hit tab, and see what we've drawn. It looks like an egg. It's kind of a flat elliptical thing. But that's sub Ds. They sometimes look weird when you have really small versions. Okay. Here's a really simple command. We're just going to control C or command C, copy, and then paste. We've got two on top of each other. I don't have to build stuff if I can just copy it. Okay, now we've got two identical sub D elements. Let's join these guys together in this amazingly cool command. It's called sub D bridge. Now it typically works with edges. So we'll pick these edges here just with the regular selection. When you're done with the set, just right click or hit enter and then pick a corresponding set. Notice I'm going the same order from the opposite side. And pretty simple, we've got a little connection box here. So you can make it more complicated. Again, I'm keeping it the bare minimum simple. So that looks very boxy, not particularly impressive, but let's hit the tab. The next step is to use our radiate sub D, which will spin it around. If you get lost in this next section, always remember to slow down and just read the command line. It'll tell you exactly what you're supposed to be selecting at every step. Okay, select the sub D, so it's the whole assembly or group. Number of radial segments is five, that's important. And then we pick a center point. Again, I got my snaps on, I'm just gonna pick right there. Boom, we get a five pointed star. It looks kind of boxy, but don't forget, hit the tab key and it's actually quite beautiful. Okay, let's now talk briefly about how to edit. This is very common in uh, using modeling software for design. This is rarely ever the point where you go, yeah, looks good, I'm done. No, you've got to continue to edit. Um, so we can talk about three different ways to pick sex subsections or features. The first one is the face. So to do this, you're going to click shift and control and then the left button. And there is the entire face. So we can move that guy in or out, continue to edit. The next element is control shift and pick an edge. So that guy can go up or down and everything follows. And the last thing you can do is on a vertex. So it's a little tricky. We have to get really carefully on top. There's that little tiny point. And so we can move it out. And it, again, it goes all the way around. I'm gonna hit control Z undo. Uh, another place to do that maybe is right here in the center. So if you just want a little kind of a local bulge, that will work. I'm going to control Z undo, but maybe you want the whole thing to be uh, larger, thicker or whatever. So you can just pick on the object itself, not just that one little fifth arm. And then using that same scale, the whole thing can get bigger. So that's really cool the way the sub D's let you pick any element and continue editing from the original part it radiates around or the whole thing. So there you go. That's how to make a sub D five pointed star. Uh, I've listed all of the commands I went through for sub D in the top and also the strategies. So uh, these are really important. Construction curves will help keep you on track and avoid having to guess or do math. Um, also pretty important, use your O snaps. Do not just click and say, it's close enough or it's good enough, you will find things ripping open later. So use those O-snaps. So that's it for me. I'm Dave. Peace and 3D.